Order of the day, private business number 24. Adjourned debate on motion of the Honourable I. Nev Matikos. And I call the Honourable Tammy Franks. Thank you, Mr President. I rise on behalf of the Greens to support this motion put before before this council by the Honourable Irene Neff Matikos in relation to the conflict affecting the people of the Republic of Armenia and the Armenian people of that uh, Republic of Artsakh, often referred to as Nagorno-Karabakh. The most recent conflict in the region, which is only the latest in a long-running dispute that has seen full-scale war, border clashes and in living memory pogroms, ethnic cleansing and the destruction of cultural heritage, is of particularly deep concern given the increased involvement of greater powers. Although Russia and Turkey have for centuries been closely involved in the events of this region, this latest conflict seems to be an expansion of their ongoing proxy clashes and regional fellow metrics that pose a substantial threat to any hopes for stability in this region. It must not be forgotten, however, that this is that it is the people of this region, particularly the ethnic Armenian population in Artsakh, who are in the greatest peril. Although occurring before this time, coincidentally, Mr President, it is since the 24th of April uh, 1915, as our Anzacs made their final preparations to sacrifice their lives on the soil of Gallipoli, that the most significant era of the Armenian people of the region began. For it is at this time that the Armenian genocide recognised and acknowledged as such, by South Australia, commenced. Sadly, our counterparts in the federal parliament have refused to recognise the Armenian genocide, but the Greens will continue to call for this to change, as we have done for years. Over one million dead as a result of this planned and coordinated effort by the Ottomans to kill and expel Armenians from Turkey, likely the first major genocide of the 20th century, and in many ways a blueprint for the actions taken 20 to 25 years later in Europe against the Jewish populations, Further persecution followed, including organised pogroms and the destruction of Armenian cultural heritage. With the heavy loss of the Artsakh forces in the most recent conflict, Turkey, with its still unacknowledged historical stain, taking a much stronger interest in Azerbaijan and flexing its diplomatic and military muscles, as well as a potential opening up of a third proxy conflict between Russia and Turkey, it is the Armenian population of the region that still stands in the greatest peril. We must do all in our power and lend our voices as members of this council and as members of political parties, lend our voices and support to the people of Artsakh and let them and the forces arrayed against them know that we are watching and that we will not allow them or their plight to be forgotten or swept away again. So the Greens today in this council stand with the Honourable Irene Nev Matikos and the um, parties in this place in support of this motion and we stand with the people of Artsakh in support of their right to live free and happy lives and to celebrate and enjoy their culture with safety and security. We commend the motion to the Council. Uh, call the Honourable Ms Lee. Thank you, Mr President. Today I rise on behalf of the Government to make a contribution to the private member's motion moved by the Honourable Irene Nev Martikos. I note that a similar motion was also moved in the House of Assembly during last sitting week. The Deputy Premier, the Honourable Vicky Chapman, had made contributions on behalf of the government in the other place. On 3rd of February 2021, the House of Assembly passed the motion following a similar motion that was passed by the New South Wales Parliament in October 2020. I wish to acknowledge the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Gladys Barajiglian, who is a proud Armenian Australian and a proud Liberal leader. I commend her advocacy on behalf of the Armenian community in New South Wales and congratulate her on her many accomplishments and contributions to Australia. I acknowledge that many honourable members in this parliament have already covered the origins of the conflicts and recent atrocities extensively in both houses in SA parliament. It is clear that the motion seeks to advocate for an enduring peaceful settlement and resolution of the conflict in the region. Mr President, our state government has consulted with the federal government on this important matter. We understand that the Australian government has put its position in the media and on the public record that the Australian government considers that the ceasefire agreement on the 9th of November 2020 provides an opportunity for all sides to work towards a permanent settlement of the conflict. 
The Australian Foreign Affairs Minister urged parties to the conflict and all sides to show restraints and support the efforts of the OSCE. OSCE in for Hansard stands for Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe Minsk Group to help negotiate a peaceful resolution. This position is consistent with the Australian international partners where the Australian government calls on both sides to engage with the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs and works towards a lasting peace resolution. This negotiation should be based on the Helsinki Final Act principles of the non-use of force, territory integrity and the equal rights of self and self-determination of people and be guided by the Madrid principles proposed by the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs. The conflict should be resolved by negotiations between the parties and not by military means. I would also like to inform the Chamber of the Council that the Australian Government's position on the current humanitarian situation in Nagodo Karabakh is that Australia supports calls by the OSCE Minsk Group co-chairs for Armenia and Azerbaijan to fully implement their obligations under the November ceasefire agreement and encourages all parties to engage with international organisations to ensure that humanitarian assistance reaches populations affected by the conflict and promote the protection of cultural and religious heritage. All these important matters are close to the hearts and minds of the Armenian Australian community here in South Australia. I wish to acknowledge the Armenian community in South Australia and extend our sympathies to those families and loved ones who are traumatised and affected by the conflict. On behalf of the Government of South Australia, we note the serious concerns regarding the horrific incidents reported in the disputed territory. On behalf of the Premier of South Australia and other members of the Parliament, I would like to thank the Armenian Cultural Association of South Australia who are here today in the Chamber for bringing this important matter to our attention. The organisation has had a long history in South Australia and was founded in 1960. Since then, the Armenian Cultural Association in South Australia has played an important role in welcoming, uniting and supporting the newly arrived Armenians to South Australia. ACASA Executive Committee works diligently and meets monthly at the Multicultural Communities Council of South Australia offices in Adelaide. Can I extend uh, our sincere thanks to the current president, Ms. Elena, or Lena, um, Gasparan and immediate past president Ms. Ms. Anna Amirkayan and the committee for their enduring efforts advocating for the Armenian community here in South Australia and also the broader community in the region of conflicts. I wish to thank the Armenian Cultural Association for raising and also the Greek community of South Australia, some leaders are here from the Greek community, for raising these serious concerns about the current conflict in the region and to also acknowledge their compassionate advocacy about the grave humanitarian consequences. Our thoughts and sympathies are with those affected by these tragic circumstances and ongoing conflict, and we extend our prayers to all those in the Armenian Australian community during this very difficult time. I have, um, through my conversation with Lena yesterday, um, that I reassure her that she can always come to my office and talk to the Office of Multicultural Affairs for any support and assistance that's required by the Armenian community in South Australia. And I want to um, sincerely thank the mover for this motion, the Honourable Irene Namatikos, for bringing this important motion to the Legislative Council. The community will be comforted and will be feel supported that this motion will pass the Legislative Council today. So I call the Honourable Mr Nev Matikos to conclude the debate. Thank you, Mr President. I would like to thank the Honourable Tammy Franks and the Honourable Jing Lee for their contribution to the debate. Since this motion was brought to the House, it has also passed in the other place, and I take the opportunity to thank the member for Badco, the member for West Torrens and the member for Enfield for their contribution on the motion. Essentially, 
This motion condemns the actions and belligerence of Azerbaijan towards the Republic of Armenia and the Republic of Artsakh. The full-scale war started by Azerbaijan was supported by Turkey, who were equipped with sophisticated attack drones and powerful long-range artillery that left a horrific mark of devastation on the region. The incredible loss of life, livelihood and sovereignty of the Armenian people caused by the greed of others is inconceivable. Turkey's growing assertiveness within the region and their military presence extending beyond their own borders places the ideals of stability and peace in the region at great risk. This motion is more than condemning the actions of Azerbaijan and Turkey. It is about standing up for democracy and human rights. It is intrinsic to our duty as legislators and representatives of, of a democracy that we stand in solidarity with those whose rights have been taken away. I would like to thank the Armenian Cultural Association of South Australia for their tireless advocacy of Armenians in South Australia and abroad. I also note that they join us here in the gallery today by President of the Greek Orthodox Community of South Australia. Thank you to you all. I urge all members to support the motion and commend it to the Council. So the question is that uh, the motion moved by the Honourable Irene Matikos be agreed to. Those for the question say aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it. <laughs>